We, we are, are Stephen and Jill. Jill. Together, we've been buying and reselling land since the 90s. Our data-centric approach leaves our buyers asking, how can you sell it so cheap? Here on the Land Academy Show. We answer that and more. Stephen Jill here. Hello. Welcome to the Land Academy Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from sunny Southern California. Today, Jill and I talk about simplifying your acquisition process. You know, Jill, this is one of those topics where it's like, you just have to follow this, this kind of real simple process. I think it's simple. It's not simple. It's, you know, it's 10 steps. It's not like... I think that real estate investment is is got this. It's almost like fishing, and this I just don't see it that way. I see it as just if you do X, you're going to get uh, results. So, what, how do you see it as fishing? You think some people set it up like that? Well, I think that like if you look at it like I think so, most people look at it like raising a child. Like there's so many variables and so much stuff you have to do, and you have to con- give it constant attention. And and if it's not going uh, the way that you want it to go, you got to get back on track. And it's this big, huge thing. Mm. And I don't see real estate investment like that at all. And I think it's, I think before data, before the, the prevalence of data, it was a lot like that. It was Maybe. sort of like, let's see what happens. Maybe, because before data, it was harder to find. You know what? Even before data, though, there were ways to find out properties are coming available. Like, read the obituaries. I hate to say it. You know, there's things like that you could do back then. You didn't necessarily have to be word of mouth. Well, that was using data. That's it's what I'm a saying. Crude way of data. <laughs> yep. <laughs> What's I don't so know, funny? Ob- obituaries got into it, but I like it. <laughs> it just came to my head. How would I, if I had no way of knowing what's going to come available on our block? Not kidding. I'd get out the paper. I'd like 1972. Let's just say it is 1972. I'd be reading the obituaries and I'd be figuring out. Oh, looks like Mrs. Smith is probably going to move. Oh my God! Let's talk about this. <laughs> there is no data. <laughs> I can give you a personal story. <laughs> when we. <laughs> When my sister and I left the house and went to college, my mom had her sights set on uh, moving out of the big house, the the house that we were raised in, and buying a small house for cash. And she had three blocks in the town that I grew up in picked out. And she went with a sticky note on all the houses that she wanted. Do you know that I tell you this story? I do know this story, yep. And she wrote a sticky note, stuck it on the door, and bought a house. Yep. And so, I, you know... In the first live event that we did a few years ago, I ran a video with this guy. Uh, this is again before huge amounts of data was available. This guy was a licensed real estate agent, and he took the time to fill out full on purchase the contract, the full on the real estate, the realtor dot the real estate agent licensed yeah. contract, filled it all out with a price in there and everything. And I, I identified one square mile of properties that he believed were you could buy for cheaper and sell for more, and. and Dropped in everybody's mail slot. Yep. I and bought a that. ton of properties and retired and mm-hmm. resold them. Some of them we kept for... So yeah, there's always a way to do this. Correct. I don't even think that's specul- uh, speculation. Right. So I guess I, I wonder where the disconnect is for anyone who wants to buy undervalued property. That's my big picture question. Do you know what? I think some of it is. It's not... Um maybe not being ready for it like you have to give an offer and be ready for it you can't just kind of you can't just put your pinky in and test the water you got to act on it Mm -hmm. because some if you start this process someone's going to say i do want to sell and you got to be ready to do it that's my point i have shark tick on the brain right now because jill and i just got back from park city and uh we were watching a lot of shark tank episodes or listening to in my case because we drove there and it's like a 10 hour drive and so it's funny to watch the Shark Tank panel good. react to the people that are in front of them. And, and, I, and like us, Jill and I are reacting to at different levels of, of people's uh, where they are in their careers. So some people are brand new, just like the Shark Tank contestants. Are, some of them are brand new. Some of them have been in whatever they're working on. They're working on for five years. Right. It's not their first company. They know what they're doing. And it's like everybody's – but still – the contestants have very wide variance of opinions about whether or not the person that's in front of them is, actually knows what they're doing or the company itself is viable right. in the future. And so there is an element of opinion that goes on, I think, with a lot of this. But for me, and that's what this show's about, 
there's a simple process that all of us kind of need to, and I guess even with Shark Tank, valuations, everybody, nobody's disagreeing about how to value a company on the show. Correct. That's true. Before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community. It's free. EA wrote, this is a little bit wordy, so bear with me here. Does it make sense to mail a property that is owned by a person who resides on an adjoining parcel of land? In other words, are homeowners willing to sell separately parceled side yards and contiguous vacant lots that they own, or is it only an infrequent occurrence? The reason I ask is because across many different counties, roughly 20 to 35% of the property records I downloaded seem to be this type of parcel. I understand we shouldn't care too much about mailer efficiency, but if these properties are significantly less likely to result in the deal, I it probably wouldn't make sense to mail them. It's pretty easy to use geocoding to get the coordinates of each given mailing address and calculate the distance to the given properties, um, wait, distance to the given coordinates of the situs property location. If deals of these kind of properties don't really happen, I'm inclined to scrub out the properties with mailing addresses, say within 1,000, 2,000 feet of a situs location, or do deals regularly happen on these kind of parcels? You want to go first? Could go this first. person make this any more complicated? There's a reason that I chose to put this question in this topic today. Yeah. This person, yeah, I'm going to pick on you for a little bit for the betterment of the uni- of universe of land investors here. How much energy and intelligence and time did it take for this person to even come up with this concept to, to ask and then write it in it? I know. <laughs> what have we said thousands of times on the show, in the education? What have we said? Yeah. Send everybody an offer. Let's see what And about 1,500 of them are going to write uh, at one for 1,500-ish, depending on a bunch of variables, are going to sign it and send it back, and you're going to buy the piece of real estate. Adjacent property and then situs address and geocoding? Is this person ever going to get an offer campaign in the mail? And why are they questioning Jill and I anyway? 16,000 deals we've done this way. Are you okay? No, I have a lot to say about okay. this. I think this is a disease. Oh. I think that, it, yeah, you know, I am all for trying to think your way through something, but, you know, this whole topic today is about breaking this thing down into 10 steps, and this person isn't out of the starting blocks and probably never will be. Maybe they will. They're very smart. We're here just here to tell you, don't go there. How's that? Don't go there. So what's the point to this? What is well, the whole point to, to other than making sure that the whole everybody in this community knows how smart they are? What's the point to pounding your face with a hammer so that you can save what? 20 or 30 no, percent? He says 20 or 30 percent of the records seem to be this type of adjacent parcel. So great, you're, you're gonna take a thousand unit data set, scrub out this, after all this angst, scrub out 20, 30% of it, so now you have a thousand units, you take it down to seven or 800, and, and for what? To pat yourself on the back and say, I made my mailer more efficient? And to save what, $100, I think? Well, let's back up. What the question is, do you think it makes a difference? And I'm going to hear to tell you, no. No, it doesn't make it a doesn't difference. It doesn't make a difference. That's, that's a, I appreciate where you're going. But let's say it does. Let's say your um, mailer. Let's say your mailer is now but 20, so what? 20% Even, more efficient. Hold on a moment. Who the hell cares? But you're still going to have that one-off person who's going to want to sell. That's anyway. what I'm saying. The I point is, the same thing. you know, don't quit. It's like assuming you know exactly what kind of property every person wants because you don't. I I've learned that. I'm like I I would think who would want this and oh my gosh it needs four wheel drive. What the heck? This is way back when. What did Stephen buy and give me to sell? What am I going to do with this? And then lo and behold, there's somebody for it. You just got to accurately portray what it is and and get it in front of the right people and have it priced right and watch what happens. So this is it. It's I just think, yeah, I think you're assuming something that you don't know to be true. And I'm here to tell you, you got to get the mail out and uh, you be, you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. It's like, the, you know, we you know what we haven't heard in a long, long time, thank goodness, is people that came in and, and you know, it was, a, it was a 
issue for a while from somebody else, not us, to only mail back tax property. That's long gone. It why, hasn't is it come long, up why is that long Because gone? we've all proven it to be um, not an issue. Because we've had shows like this and episodes like right. this and seminars, full seminars about why you should never only buy or back just tax. mail property with back taxes associated with it. Because right. you're it missing all the valuable good property that people are happily paying. So if you do this, this is my only thing and I'll end on this for me. Don't do this. Because all you're going to do, you're scrubbing out the sweep couple who've been paying taxes on the lot behind them that they need the cash now they don't want to move they're happy to sell that parcel you can have it there you go thousands and thousands of people some of whom are land academy members or have been land academy members or just getting started or or they're so smart that they've left have learned how to send how to effectively send mail out from us why would you question that here's what you should do if you're or in what i did in my career you learn from all these people who are smarter and filthy stinking rich and live at the beach you learn from them and then when you're after you've learned from them and and, and done a bunch of deals their way you sit down with yourself and say you know what that guy is smart and rich but I'm a little bit better at data than he is. He might be better at real estate, but I'm a little bit better. So I'm gonna apply some stuff over here, some new stuff, and just kind of see if it works and split test it and do it. That's what you do. But it just cracks me up. I'm not done with this at all. I know you're not. I'll be over here. Up. It cracks me <laughs> up. That people, I'm like, I'm sorry, I tried couple, to help. A couple months ago, somebody, brought, I put it in the show. Somebody thought it was a good idea in their mail campaign to put a headshot of themselves. Why? I, they thought it would increase their mailer yield, I guess. Or they'd love to, love to look at pictures of themselves. I don't know. Why the hell would you ever put a headshot of yourself in a mailer? So I just don't get this. So this... Today's topic, simplify your acquisition process. This is why you're listening. Simpl Hi. How simplify. you doing today? Simplify your acquisition process, not complicate it. There, you know, I could call it, how, you know what? Today's topic, complicate your acquisition process and your life. This is the meat of the show. <laughs> Please tell us, Stephen, what's really going on with you right now? How are you feeling? I feel great. Okay. I feel great. I, I haven't seen you this opinionated <laughs> in quite some time, and I... Uh, um, I think we all got the point. All right, good. Okay. <laughs> There's about 10 steps to buying and selling real estate our way. It starts with choosing a place to send a mail campaign. I'm not going to go through the exact 10 steps. Um, if you need the 10 steps, you know, go to support at landacademy.com. They'll, they'll share, share them with you. It's, it's riddled all of our, our education. I've been using the same 10 steps since the early 90s. And so when you take those 10 steps, the first one is um, getting educated, which is what you're doing by listening to this. If you haven't violently turned the knob off of your, or however you're listening to this at, by this point in this episode, congratulations, you're actually gonna learn something, I hope. You know, get that educated. Uh, the second step is, is find a place or uh, pit zip codes or geographic areas against each other uh, using the red, green, yellow test to see where you're gonna send mail. There's a bunch of data pieces to that. And then get the mail out and, and step by step by step. Uh, eventually, the acquisition process ends. You know, my part ends. The mail is out there and Jill takes over with the uh, dealing with the phone and, and uh, purchasing and reselling the property. So this this seems to be uh, the data comes, you know, data comes back to us or feedback comes back to us with members and non-members and either like the greatest that, oh my God, thank you, you changed my life. I'm moving on to buying huge properties and doing fantastic, or I don't get it. Maybe we should send a mailer out and exclude 20% of the people that own adjacent property. So here's, here's the point, the takeaway from this. It's about a 10 step process. It can be 12 steps if you're doing real specialized property, but it's between 10 and 12 steps. And each of those steps, if you take a day or two days or however long it takes you, a week to kind of really get in there and figure it out and listen to what we say, you're going to do great. You're going to knock it out of the park. I can, I can almost 
guarantee it. And the only reason I say almost is because legally I can't sit here and say I guarantee you'll be successful. <laughs> That's the only reason. But the vast, vast, vast majority of people who follow through on this don't question it. Don't complicate it. Take the 10 steps and blow them out. They're going to do great. I agree. I don't have a whole lot to add to this. I just, and it's it comes from this this topic to me uh, reminds me of some people I see just like not not so much EA, but just some people I like are going. Should I, when they're doing their due diligence, they're digging too deep. Like, um, should I get a perk test? Should I do this? Should I do that? I'm like, no, wait, hold on a moment. <laughs> Why? Why are you complicating it? Why are you doing extra steps that you don't need? You know, do I need to walk Where the property? You, it's just misinformation, I think. I think people are, you know, they read somewhere I should do all this stuff, and you really don't. Um, it's And it's not that you're doing a disservice. It's just stuff that's not needed. If somebody, and, he, and here's my point of this too. Um, I'm buying it very inexpensively, and I'm selling it inexpensively, and I'm passing the savings on to my buyer. If they want that next thing, if they want a perk test, they can go get it. It's going to be cheaper if they do it than if I do it, hands down. And most of the time, too, by the way, in um, in normal, you know, real estate broker transactions, the buyer does perform a perk test, and they do pay for that off, you know, themselves. That's usually things on the buyer, you know, buyer to perform, buyer to verify, all those things. So it's not like I'm not doing my job. I don't. I don't need to. And we even take it so far as. You know, um, I mean, there's just all kinds of things that I don't do that, you know, and like a, a, someone did like a survey. I had one time a trucker one time say, look, you know, can you get a survey on the property? I said, sure, I can do that. It's going to change the price a little bit. So let me tell you what, what's involved in this and who to call. And you decide, he goes, oh, you know what? I'll take care of that. Yeah. <laughs> thought you'd say that because if I do all the steps and the time and whatever I just pass it on to you and then you can decide if you even really want to do that so I guess my big picture philosophical question is why would why do certain people want to complicate stuff they just seem to be that kind of people well I think it goes back to uh, you know like you said there's just you know some people in other careers that they're used to having 18 steps and you have to do all these silly not silly but all these things or it's not right and this doesn't have to be that way you're buying a piece of property and you're selling it you know I mean, even you know what's interesting too it's like we're those we're i'm the kind of buyer that even if i walk into a house you know i'm saying i'm buying a primary residence I'm not gonna say, call me when the carpet's the color I want and the walls are the color I want and I hate these windows and whatever it is. I'm still gonna look at the property as a big picture item and I think that's how I see land too. I know it is. So I don't have any, there's nothing that's gonna be a fatal flaw for me and I don't have to have a checklist of things. So if I'm buying a primary residence, I'm gonna, we just almost did it the other day. We were walking yep. through about to, yep. gosh, plop some money down on a vacation property. Uh, that was when the weather was nice, <laughs> and, the weather, and then the weather changed, and one of us, not me, said, hell no, and so uh, anyway, it was a dreamy, beautiful part of Utah, and we're walking this thing, and I'm like, I didn't see any flaw, anything, I'm like, I went back, you know why, because we went back, and I looked at it, what was the price per square foot, and then where did it compare to the rest of the area, and what was going on in the area, and I'm like, done, that's what I needed, and were there problems? Sure, the garage situation wasn't that great, and the slope wasn't that great, and getting up there wasn't that great. But I, I could get past all that because of the, um, you know, price. Like I said, the economics worked. So I'm kind of getting off on a tangent here, so you can pull me back in. I think it's self-expression. I think that there are people that, you know, I always come back to the classroom environment. You know, whether it's high school or college, but more college than high school. There's always a few people in a class or one or two people in every single class that the instructor's saying, this is how it, how you do it. And here's a few case studies on how it goes on. And this is what happens over here. And this is what happened over here. And, and this is what we all learned. And that's kind of the takeaway. And it might may or may not be on the test. And there's always somebody that says some version of, well, wait a minute. What if this could happen? 
And what if what if my hair was two inches longer? And what if I um, please pay attention to me? Pay attention to me. It's almost pay attention like, to my way. You're right. There's adjacent property over here that you're missing. You're missing it, Steve and Jill. You're missing it. No, I'm not. You're missing it. Sometimes there all, is a bit of a cry for help. A show offy thing. I understand. I was never that kid. No. I'm like, can we be done now? No. I'm like, I was I'm like, like in the back going, here, I want to shut go, that guy up. I want to go play baseball, man. Let's get out of this math <laughs> It's class. almost lunchtime. Can we go? <laughs> shut that guy up. Sit on, somebody sit on him. <laughs> Plus this guy in the front of the class is 180 years old and he knows what he wants. Right. I'm not going to argue with math. Right. I'm not going to change math. <laughs> <I love> it. <laughs> I'm not going to change history. Nope. I'm not going to change how I buy and sell real estate. After I master it, then maybe I'll look at new data sets. We're looking at new data sets all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Happy you could join us today, Monday through Friday. You can find us right here on the Land Academy Show. Tomorrow, the episode on the Land Academy Show is called How to Win at Life. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. Yeah, Here's a hint. I can't wait to hear. I don't know what you're going to talk about here. It's not uh, make everything incredibly complicated. And, you know, it's not make everything quite uh, complicated. <laughs> 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 Love it. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you find our content valuable and we really appreciate your support. If you haven't already, please get on over to our YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button. Your comments and suggestions help to us to create the type of content you're here for. Hitting the like button on your favorite episodes helps to support our channel's algorithm and gauge your interest for future shows. We, we are Stephen Jill. Jill information and inspiration to buy undervalued property.